Right, in this video I wanted to do something very simple, using toilet paper to make masks safe for other people. Now you might think, what the hell are you talking about? Um, also, if you're just wondering what happened to the moustache, um, there was an accident shaving it the other day, it became a bit lopsided. Every time I straightened it out I looked more and more like Hitler, so I decided to just shave it off. Um, but I might grow it back. Anyway, uh, the problem was, um, with masks, is obviously, if you're wearing a respirator like this, it protects you. It doesn't protect other people, because when you breathe out, you're still passing your exhale breath out an exhale valve, there's nothing to catch it. So I thought something as simple as toilet paper could be employed, and I know toilet paper at the moment is stupidly, you know, hard to get, so maybe it's not the best idea, but I'm sure kitchen roll, regular tissues would work just as well. The idea of obviously that if you sneeze or cough, you're meant to sneeze into a tissue and then bin it. I thought ideally what you could do is use toilet paper on quite a lot of masks, like so. So just get your mask, uh, get the toilet paper, maybe fold it um, once. It's not that easy to do while holding the mask, but the idea being that basically you get the um, toilet paper over the exhale valve like so, then clamp it on with the exhale valve cover. You could also, alternatively on a lot of masks, if they're not designed so you can do this sort of thing, do it with um, what's it, elastic bands. but. Right, that's sort of clamped on there. Again, it's it's not the tightest thing in the world, but the point is the XL valve is totally covered. So what I want to see now is if you put the filter on, will it let you breathe out fine? Because obviously the worry is going to be that um, what you want to do is just be able to breathe out, but and the valves work properly, but basically the air you're breathing out is catching in the tissue, so when you get home you could just throw this tissue in the bin. You know, the idea being that you're protecting other people potentially if you had a virus. So it's basically doing both the job of a surgical mask and a, um, you know, gas mask, respirator. What I would like, though, is if a company at some point actually invented a mask where over the XL valve you can put some sort of, like, proper filter paper type thing. That would be quite a nice idea. But anyway, let's try this. So there's a bit of resistance breathing out. As you can see, the mask is inflating a bit, but overall it still works all right. So what I'm just going to do now is take this back off again, pop this cover off, and just try um, changing the size of the paper. Or, you know, changing this a bit, because I think it might because it's folded quite a few times, so that would definitely protect other people from you at least, because um, it's actually causing, you know, a bit of backflow with the valve. So let's just put it flat like this over here like this. So that's got about two layers on it now, not four. And obviously if you wanted to do this properly you could cut them to size and everything, but let's just try and get this back over there. That's gone on a bit better that way, because um, you can see the CM5 bit a bit clearer. So now let's try this. Let's put the filter back on. We're going to try it with a half face mask as well. With some masks, obviously, they've not got XL valve covers you can do this with. But I think what you could do very easily is just literally get an elastic band of a tissue or something and do it that way. Um, a bit less resistance this time. So yeah, I think the mask still works on. Because obviously the air is still escaping from that valve, it just builds up a bit in the mask first. So there's that design. Again, not perfect, but it works. Now I wanted to try it with a half face mask. So we have the GVS ellipse here, and basically the exhale valve there is there. So what I was thinking of this one is obviously we want to get it in that bit there. So what I'm just going to do is just rip this paper into about a quarter, if that. So that should just about cover that valve. There we go. So now let's put the filter mechanism, Ooh, dropping the paper, back on. I'll tell you what, I'll just kneel out of frame a second and get this put on here. And try this. So that bit goes there. Try and twist this bit back through. There we go get the actual covers to fit. Right, I definitely don't want to break the integrity between the seal and the filters though, so I need to be very careful about that. 
Actually, this will probably work better with this mask if I just squish this paper into, rather than in front of the valve, into the actual holder section. Yes, that's going to work better. Seems like a strange idea, but I'm sorry, I'm doing this all out of frame, so I'm just going to pop back up. Um, so, so you've got something to look at. Um, so yeah, with this mask, I think it will actually work better to stick it in this plastic holder here rather than the in, directly in front of the valve, the reason being that the air still has to flow through these holes but um, this way it's going to cause less interference with other bits of the mask's mechanism so there's that. Of course you could also just elastic band over the front of this cover which might work a bit better but I thought this would be an easier way of trying it to begin with, I was probably wrong there. But there we go, so it will look like that. Um, and then let's reattach the other side let's just get the straps back where they're meant to be Because that's part of the problem when you do this. That. That's strange. Why is the top strap? Oh, it's because I'm looking at it upside down, aren't I? Wait, no. I'm I'm very confused now because the top strap is clearly at the bottom. Was it always like that? I'm I'm very confused. Or has it been threaded on wrong? Well, for the sake of this video, this doesn't matter. But yes, this is really confusing, you know. Or is this back to front? That would be the best explanation. Maybe that GVS thing was always upside down, I don't know. So, yeah, let's take this back off again. Oh, I see, you can rotate this round like that. Yeah, that, that will be why. Right, so it was just something very simple. Yes, now this is back where it should be. Okay, I didn't realise that entire thing would rotate. So now, let's reattach this with these round the right way. Uh, this is why I don't like editing this stuff out of the videos, because I think some people might find it amusing, or it might just answer a question somebody else might have down the road if they had a GVS ellipse, and I'm like, all oh, the straps are on the wrong way. So, basically, as you can see, you've got a tissue wedged in there, the mask looks the same from the inside. So what I just want to see is, can you breathe out without it completely ruining how the mask's meant to seal? Let's get the straps tightened again. If I can find where they've gone. There we go. Well, that work seems to work perfectly. Yet the air is still definitely flowing out there. So you can probably see the tissue moving. Obviously most of the air is filtering through the tissue. So again, there'd be much better ways of doing this if you wanted to spend a lot more effort on it. Personally, I would recommend um, maybe a bit of cotton, like, you know, from a pillowcase or something. And then you could wash it or just bin it. If you've got an old sheet or something, you could probably cut that into, uh, like, hundreds of these little bits. And then, you know, do that with your mask. But I think it would work with most masks. Say with something like a GP5, I think if you just literally got an elastic band, you could hold it over the exhale valve that way. Um, with a mask like this, again, a similar principle. You could probably just elastic band... A bit of cotton over here or with some of these masks of course you could just stick the thing inside um, against that valve there and as long as your face kept it in position it didn't irritate your face too much having it in there like that you could just essentially breathe in and out that way so that's that I hope this video has been interesting for some people well, I know some people are gonna say what's the point of this video but the point is if you were conscious of other people and were a decent person you know and were going out and about and we're using a mask, but you didn't want to put germs onto other people, because, uh, you know, the air is filtered coming in with a respirator, but not coming out. You could do this to, you know, give other people a bit of germ protection, because quite a few countries now are basically forcing or recommending people to wear masks, but often it's just the ones to prevent your germs going to other people. So this way you could have a fully inclusive mask, in theory, I guess, um, where, you know, it protects the air you breathe in and um, protects the air you breathe out, which is better for everybody because I'm sure in this sort of corona situation if everybody had a mask which protected what they were breathing and protected you know other people from what they're breathing out you know their exhale and their inhale is both protected or shielded in the sense um, it would do a good thing to lower the R naught a bit so there we go